Welcome back again to the second part of my little tutorial series. The first one. Uh, I don't know what title I'm going to give it. I, I might, in video, I might give it the title of um, just tutorial, second part, space. And then might change the title later on. Because I do plan to make more tutorials with different paintings. Um, but that is, I mean, remain to be seen what type of painting I'll, I'll make. At the moment, it is just going to be uh, just uh, no name, just normal tutorial. So I don't have to show this, just to check up. Okay, that's good. Now, this will be the space portion of today's painting session. Uh, personally, I think this is the best part, as it also has the grand reveal at the end. And we'll get to that soon. But I will go clip this thing up somewhere maybe on a string now that'll butt up against something and i don't want that yeah this mic isn't the best best i got at the moment so it's, it's fine as it works um it's pushing if you hear any uh like muffles or any like weird noises i do apologize i'm hoping this works see right there i am hoping this works quite well but i start with this if you had not watched the other video i do advise you to watch as it has some very important information about how to pr prepare a painting how to uh, make the planets which of course must come before the space if you plan to have planets at all and some other useful tips. Um, again, if you want to paint alongside me, Bob Ross style, you are more than welcome to do so. We will simply start back up where we left off last video, which just was just finishing the planets. So now we will start off now the stencils. We will place down I up where we want it to be. So for me, I'll just wipe this off. You see, it should be dry to the touch. Okay. If you use a gloss, then it should be very smooth. Regardless, it should be you know, dry to some extent to the touch. Let me flatten this down. That's good. It's there. Okay. Pretty good. There will be an escalation of size. So big could be smaller. I plan to have an alignment, so I will position myself here to get a better view of things. Um, let's put it there. That's good. I'm going to position this again. Just a little bit. There we go. There we go. This is this again. Just a little bit like that. And finally, this here. Let's look at the alignment. Okay, this has to be a bit, well, I would like it to be a bit more up, but I would want this in this corner just as it is. Okay, yeah, that's good. Just like that, an escalation. Now, next up is for the weights. This is very, very important. So listen up. I have this little crate here. It has my weights, big and small. Now for lids, you want big weights. It presses down the sides of that lid or um, container or whatever you use to push it down. For flat stencils like this, you want light weights. No matter if this is as dry as you think it is or not, you want it to be as um, as light as you can while still maintaining uh, pressure on the point to which it stays still and has no lifts, no lips, no nothing. Just completely flat on the painting. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, 
of course, uh, there's some cases where uh, it's better to have heavier ones. It would be to the drier side. And of course, as I mentioned, it doesn't matter if it's as dry as you think it is, but there is a certain threshold where a certain amount of weight is allowed for certain things too much and it's just it's just not advised you could still use very heavy weights for certain things but again it's very ill advised that you do so unless you're seeking a particular thing okay. this central here it has a lot of like lift ups so that is in fact an issue that I must solved with weight. I don't really need a lot of coverage here as there will be the land line just over here. So we'll be covering this planet for a considerable amount. Just checking the angle real quick. Okay. Now I gave this um, like maybe an hour to dry. So, you know, considerable amount of time. This was probably dry by the 15, 20 minute mark. But I just waited that amount of time as uh, I got carried away in a video game I was playing. So, my bad. But we're here now, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really impact much. There's nothing bad about it being too dry, except for uh, some gloss things. Um, so if something is too dry uh, for a long time and you apply a lot of gloss to that area, uh, of course, there's other factors as well. But I can only assume this is part of it. If you're applying a lot of gloss to a very dry area that has been dry for a long time, it will uh, crack. It will have blue cracks along um, uh, along that dry part. If something is too wet, then it will have bubbles. Or, um, what's another word for it? Um, like freckles is not uh, like pox is another comparison. And very unsightly things. Little hives, I, I think, will be better. Like a, a hive texture, which is very unsightly. So try to avoid glossing things. Um, having a gloss finish or any finish for that matter, especially gloss, but still um, a clear coat finish. And in with M proper conditions uh, but with that out of the way i'm just checking at the sides pushing down to see if there's any give too much give and i will apply more weight if it maintains then i will not give weight i'll simply let it be as it, as it may okay that seems good All right. Oh, well, man, we're gonna turn my mic. Some more words, more straight up. There you go. That might be a bit better. Okay. But that might not be better. One minute. Man. Um. What about this? I think this is good. Again, if it starts rubbing up against something, I do apologize. I'll try to quick it. Uh, fix it as quick as I can. I'll try to nestle this in here. Sorry for like all the unpreparedness, but I don't know why it keeps like wanting to go back like this. Okay, it doesn't matter. We'll we'll get to this. Okay. Let's see about this. That's even worse. Okay. That take a while. One minute. Come on. Okay. 
this looks good. I think, I think this will do just fine. If there's any issues, then I will just change it back. Actually, I think it's too close to my mouth. You know what? I'll just place it here. I just right there. If it goes bad, then I'll just readjust it. Like so. If not, it keeps doing this mess. Uh, I'll just I don't know place it on the ground or something. I don't want to deal with this. It's getting really dang and irritating. Okay. Now, next up is the space, of course. Now, to get this going, I'll have a very dark coat on the bottom. This will be maintained. Uh, this will be facilitated by the my dark walnut, dark brown color. So, I'll just put some weight over here, just try to weight. Though it is the same color as the shade, I'll still put it there. Okay, even though it might not be a lot. So this will be the line. See, not a lot, but the line is still there. I will get rid of this can. It has served its purpose. It will now go into the um, great can, heaven and the sky. I don't know the equivalent of a spray can paradise, but the Home Depot in the sky. I don't, I don't really, I don't really imagine what it would be like. Now, I will try to go in a way where the direction of my space patterns will go. What I plan to do for the space is to have a nebula follow the planets into the alignment. Something I think will look very, very cool. I will have the neon, of course, incorporated into this nebula. Again, like I did in the last video, I am spritzing. If this aches your fingers, the repetitive motion of doing this, simply get, or, or they rest your hand, or simply get one of these. Clip on with force. Align it. And spray. As a bowery's think it's better to do this with my own hands than to do it with this as I get a better sense of control. I am closer to it so I have a more uh, a sense of, uh, I don't know what you call it, um, of direction. Yeah. I think that's it. So as I walk away, I am getting uh, a new paint yeah, i'll use some corner brown sure this is a tint above with a tad bit of red mixed into a type of brown then we like very dark red oak very dark and i'll blend this in with the red and then the nebula will be dark uh, like bright orange type of thing So you see how it is got a little bit of dark dark cherry but only a hint it's I mean like that very dark mahogany type of color to it which will serve well in the red gradient that will follow afterwards okay mike seems to be holding up well i don't know about the audio though um, i'm hoping the audio is good Okay. Still green means the audio is doing fine. Now I'm gonna have my a dark wine type colored red that will blend very well with the mahogany or um, Kona brown color. Now I have. Let's see if cranberry works on me. Yeah, it looks very like well. Bit of a purple color, but that's fine. Straight line, stay the alignment, stay the course. Next up, I will have 
Canonial Red. So this is the traditional normal red color. Again, I'm doing spritzing to have uh, limited uh, chances for it to uh, cloud up. Light red will soon follow. And then next up, the brightest of reds, poppy red. This is a satin color, so it will spread much further. Okay, that looks good. See that good line that goes about in the center? I'll have this over here too. There we go. It helps a little bit. A bit arcing over here. That's good. See, this goes about straight. In line, right there. Now, next, I will have this. I will, I don't know what type of pattern I want with this. Okay, I think I know what I want. I, I won't have uh, orange. I'll have the neon orange, just not like the clear orange. Let's take this off. There you go. And I would imagine this is just a bad uh, gray cap. Okay, this should be better. Oh my goodness, yes it is. Okay, now, as shown in the sketch, as I will bring up again, there's a nebula there. I might not keep the ring around this one if I, if I don't have the space, but I think I will. So I'll probably keep it in. Okay. So I have this cut out. So what this is, is used to be just flat piece and then just tore very slowly and deliberately to get a pattern like this. And then once you have that done, you crease a tiny bit like a few inches or just like an inch and a half above the tallest part of uh, that tear. So you have a bit of a platform you spray. And then you have that. See? Oh, good. So I'm going to have to move these out of the way a little bit so I can have a bit more space. Try not to lay it one hundred like fully down. Okay, and just follow the imaginary line you just made up. Follow the planets. Here we go. Just one cloud to start. And Follow it up with another one, following the same traje uh, traje trajectory. Sorry, that you did before. There we go. Of course, we are far from done. We have so many more clouds to cover. Now, do it again. Maybe a bit more heavier, maybe a bit more lighter, depending on where you are painting when you're spraying. Try to have some crisp lines, don't. I'm going to move this for a minute. Don't just spray 
um, just normally without this. Try to have some lines, some cloud lines around to have some sense of form. That's why I have this, to have a sense of form. Which is very important when it comes to this. Form is very important, you see, especially in this, and I really want, uh, you, I would like to have, of course, you can have more wispy nebula clouds, though I will, I would like to have more, um, steward, uh, um, or staunchly, um, I don't know, what's the word? Seamed? A good seamed ones? One with a, a very defined, yeah, very defined clouds. That's what I like to see. Of course, that doesn't make it the only type of viable nebula cloud. There's so many other types. Do please experiment. And do please tell me how those experiments go. As I may also learn from you as you learn from me. A teacher can learn, after all, from their student. It's not impossible, you see. Now I'm going to mess it up a little bit going into the center. To have that type of a uh, mist down. There we go. Okay. But still have that red in the middle. Now for the good part. Not the best part, but a good part. To have that neon in. Just spray it. Some strange whole areas. Doesn't really matter. Have some areas. This will be covered up. Maybe I should have done this at the start, but it's fine. I might even cover it up later on. We'll just see how it looks. But for now, it looks fine. With how it's going right now, I don't think I'll have to scrap this. I think I'll do just fine. Yep, this looks like it's going well. I'll probably cover it up at the, at the ends, um, but that's fine. of how this will look good 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 this will be the edge of the nebula as it would seem so I will spray it more to define such a characteristic of this of it being on the outskirts of course some of it won't be that visible as UV isn't as visible as you might think. But when the light is on, oh boy, oh baby, yeah, it is very much so. Now, I am going to move some of these as a lot of it is now. Uh, the stencils are usually now stuck as of, you know, the paints being on them now. Uh, 
Okay. Now let's see some depth. See, good old depth. Always, always good. Now keep the bottom stuff absent as it will be covered a lot by the mountains. So I just don't think it's next necessary at the moment to have it there. So I'll put the cloud stencil uh, to the side and wear what I have should have been wearing this entire time, gloves. I should have been wearing a respirator the entire time. I hope you have been doing so too. Um, but I had to talk um, and I didn't want to be muffled. So you do understand that spray paint gets very, very sticky. So I'll get the comments first out of the way. before doing anything else as to get the comments done with clean, unsticky hands. Um, and you know, what, um, what, where the alternative is, I don't know the other word for it, um, where the alternative is to make the comments with sticky hands. So uh, these are pretty sticky at the moment, but they're, they could be much more, much, much worse. Okay. So this, this is a piece of paper that I folded, but the unique thing is you fold in the halfway mark. You crease halfway, and then you hard crease at the end to have a tip, and then you hold it like this. Then you have a comet shape. I want to have more broad comets, so I'll open my hands up a little bit and spray in, in the top to middle. Of course, it might help depth if I were to make these comets um, after the, the stars as to cover up some of the stars. But I think it's fine. I don't really care about that at the moment because usually that's not the main critique. If there is going to be a critique, it, it, that really won't be one of them. Uh, there will be other things to worry about. Now I have that down. Let's switch to the light. See? Very prominent shine to all of these. Now I'll add a little more in this area. Uh, but not over here as the mountains will cover up the majority of this. So just one more should be enough. Let me wipe the comment maker real quick. If you let the paint accumulate over time and drip down, you'll be left with a very nasty spot of paint. Uh, just a nasty glob left over. And you really, really do not want that. Looks messy. It's very difficult to clean off gracefully without leaving any uh, residue marks this is overall a mess so do try to avoid that at all costs and again best way to do that is prevention which is just to wipe it off with a piece of tissue paper um, um, paper towels used newspaper clean newspaper anything that you could wipe it off even your hands if you use gloves, of course, that will do just fine against it. Now, once we have the comments down, we could do the next step, stars. And right after this, we'll get to the best part. But in this, you will have to learn a little bit. So you hear now the I spritz, or you might hear it now, I spritz and then flick once. See, I flick once to get all the powerful globules out. That is what I call a pre-flick. I could flick multiple times after that. But after the pre-flick, you get much more distant and more numerous stars to add depth, of course. Try to be far away, don't be close. The more distance you have, the better. Of course, do not be that far apart from your painting as it just won't go anywhere. Have good distance. 
and also maintain that distance. So you see? The stars shine very, very brightly. Now, I'll take these off. Um, no, I'll keep this on to take the weights off. But first, I'll get Comet Maker. Yeah, I don't really have like an official name for that, that, that type of tool, just the Comet Maker is what I call it. So now, uh, you might have noticed there are some marks here. And that's fine. That's not really much of an issue. If you have those marks, that is because you have scraped the, the Cloud Maker. And it's just feature of a uh feature of a thing followed by maker is just my theme here um, but yeah if you do have those little marks is because you touched wet paint with that you also might notice if you look very very closely there are cracks here like here and here i can only assume this is caused by a lot of neon paint it happened once before uh, with another painting of mine that i did not make a video on but a uh, very strange phenomenon of this neon's paint but it still serves its purpose of course just a little bit of cracks here and there and here it adds depth but here it's just a bit too prominent uh, but without the way it's this is a little bit nitpick that you will have to get close to really look at. So now I have my gloves away, and that means we get to the best part in the semi-ending of the video. Now, which one should I remove first? I think that middle, uh, that smaller one, will be the best place to start off. There, one, two, seamless. Three, brilliant. Last but not least, to round off the alignment, another good one. There we go. This is what I call the best part. I will tell you exactly why. What you just witnessed was a, a uh, an example of chance, of randomness, of painting. I'll sit down for this. So you saw the texture, of course, but you didn't see the shape of it, and neither did I. And it's only when you reveal what it really looks like, in shape, in form, after you take off the stencil, you finally find out if it peeled, if it stuck, if it messed up, if it bled into, if it bled out, if it somehow had any other issues, or if it became flawless, like it did here. But it's only after that point where you get to see what it truly looks like. If it is worth the while, or if it was a burden to you. And I think it was worthwhile, don't you think? And if you're doing this alongside me, I do hope it was worthwhile for you as well. But yeah, that's, that's the space for you. The stars, comets, the nebula, everything. That's the stars, the very stars that's above my head right now. I just laid down on a piece of glass paper. And I hope you can do the exact same thing too with what I have taught you, or maybe someone else has taught you, or even by yourself and you're watching this now out of curiosity or boredom. Either way, I hope you have gotten some, something from this video. Either it was knowledge, entertainment, uh, wasted time, either, just either, either or of those things. It doesn't really matter. All that really matters is that you somewhat enjoyed this video. Either you learned something, uh, I would prefer it was the first one, or you just enjoy watching me talk, to paint, to see what it looks like. Um, and I hope well, not just the first one, I hope it was everything. Um, all of the above. But regardless, I, I, I'm proud of it. And if 
you make a painting alongside me, I hope you're proud of it as well. If you have, then do please um, don't be afraid to share it with me. I would love to see your rendition of the things I've done. It would be a, a great honor to me to know that uh, someone really pulled a Bob Ross and decided to paint alongside me as I was teaching. Um, it would mean a lot. Um, yeah, with the sentimental stuff out of the way, I do thank you all for watching. Um, and I hope you have taken away something from today's video. Now I'll turn off the lamp, uh, the ring light, as to show the full brightness of the UV. There we go. Hopefully my, uh, my phone can capture all this brilliance. It really does shine. Trust me. It really does. I'm looking at it myself. Hopefully my phone sees it. It's, it's like no other colors exist except for the brilliance orange. It goes across. Yeah, I hope you have enjoyed today's painting session as much as I have. And I hope you have enjoyed today's painting tutorial even more. Um, again, I hope you have got something out of today. And for that next video, it will be the mountains. That's what's coming next. And I hope that you will stick by to watch that tutorial or to go into another video altogether. Either way, I hope to see you again in either one of my videos, uh, past, present, or future. And um, do feel free to talk in the comments, discuss what you think about what I have done, um, to like, dislike, to share your opinion on the things I have done. Um, if you think it is good, do you think my art is good, my techniques, uh, any critiques, anything, anything helps. Um, and with that out of the way, I bid you all good night and farewell. And again, thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.